Hi, it's the girl out there right here with you. It's me, Cindy. And this week I am here with Cody Mar. Yay! Hi, yay! I'm so happy to be back. This is amazing. You. Thank you. Uh, very first podcast and now back again. Yay! Yay! <laughs> I didn't know it was your very first. You were my very first. Oh, that very really warms my heart. Thank you. <laughs> and now we are going to be up on YouTube and yes. all these things. So, you know, everyone gets to actually see you, Cody, because mm, um, guys, <laughs> you're here. And Cody, the I always get to, I've, I've tried, I've wanted to do this and haven't, is I, um, I want to do like the top 10, um, but not best, but most listened to episodes. Um, because mm. like a few other podcasts have done that that I've seen. Your po podcast is listened to so often because I can see that. Um, and it's just it's one that I get the most um comments about, and people still go back and listen to yours. Um, wow. your yours just touches so many people's hearts, and uh, probably just the way from the moment I met you so long ago, um, you just have such a true story, and plus because you were just such um an open hearted human, you're just you're just so right there. So, um. <laughs> Take Thank it all you, in. Cindy. I'm taking that in. I appreciate it so much. I feel the same about you, as you know. Uh -huh. So I uh, so excited to have you back uh, because um, there's more exciting things happening in your life, and um, I've been watching you on Instagram, and it is so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Want to share a little bit about what's happening for you? Yeah. So I think I'm just going to dive right into the meat of yes. it. Yes. Because that's kind of how I roll. Yes. So on the last time we talked, I really went into sort of my history with chronic illness and what I experienced with the loss of my colon. And that was something that even though I wasn't comfortable talking about it publicly right away, it's something that I got comfortable talking about publicly. Something I have not been comfortable talking about publicly is my history with eating disorders. and. Um, that is sort of where I'm challenging myself to go and is <clears throat> very connected to what I'm working on now, which is a new course, but I'll, I'll get to that later. So that's sort of really where I'm at. I'm really ready to talk about this other aspect of my life, share this other aspect of my heart, expose myself in that way. Um, just to A, let, I want to, you know, be as open as possible with anybody that might benefit from hearing that or might just want to get to know me or might want to work with me. I think, you know, I've really, I know what I said to myself, wow, you're really hiding this. You are hiding this hardcore. And I had to look at why. And now that I know why I'm ready to share about it. So that was really the inspiration for what I'm working on now, which is a course about called breaking the diet matrix. <laughs> I love it. I am. Um, okay. So I, yeah, I, I popped onto a live that you were on um, a few days ago, and it was interesting um, because you shared openly what when you started to, I guess, diet mm -hmm. um, and how your eating had started, eating habits had started at an early age, how you were looking at um, dieting. And do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. So I grew up in New York City and um, diet was just in, it, I, feel, I feel like I was born with it. You know, like my mom was always dieting. One of her big, her family was overweight. And one of her biggest fears about me was that I would be overweight. And she equated that with unlovable. And so my weight was an issue before I even knew it. Like my mom was talking to doctors. I, I uh, was switched from apple juice to diet Coke when I was like four years old which hello eighties. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, and 
it was just always an issue. And what's really interesting is the contrast to that is that when I was little and probably, and still, I loved food. I loved eating. I had a huge appetite. I was not a picky eater. I was really into it. So it was this interesting paradox of feeling like this big appetite for life and for food and for enjoyment. And then being told like, careful if you if you really allow that desire to be in full bloom you're not going to be lovable Mm -hmm. and obviously those weren't the words that came out of my mother's mouth but that was the frequency um and the vibe and so you know I didn't I, I wouldn't say I had disordered eating until really my late teens but it was always just this thing like it was you know, oh, we're going to go on a diet for, I was talking about in the live, this beach day where the whole school went to the beach or, you know, then it was just, it was always in the back of my mind. Like there was, my house was filled with all the, at the time, you know, fat was evil in the nineties. So it was filled with all the low fat foods and all the diet soda. And it was just, it was in my culture and, um, stop me at any point, by the way. (laughs) Um, And then in my late teens, I started having difficulty in different ways. Like I switched schools and all of a sudden I was this weirdo child from Brooklyn and I'll side of Manhattan, which I know if you're not from New York, doesn't mean much, but it's just a very big cultural difference. Um, And I just felt so, so much like an outcast and I don't really know how it happened, but I just started controlling my diet more and more and more. Um, and something in me just shifted. It was like, all right, I can't, I can't deal with all of this social stuff that's going on. So I can, but I can deal with this. I can deal with every single day. I'm going to eat as little as possible. Um, and then what I feel happens or what happened to me uh, is that an eating disorder sort of took over. Uh, something happened in my brain where it wasn't something I was doing anymore. It was something that I could not stop doing. Um, So in my teens, I got to the point where I needed to be hospitalized and it just started this whole cascade from 16 to 21 of hospitalizations and mental institutions and, you know, a lot of stuff. And um, it took me a really long time to dig myself out of having a severe eating disorder. And, um, yeah. And then, <laughs> and I don't know, I don't know how far to keep going with this, but no, this is a lot. This is good. One, I, yeah. I think that this happens for a lot more people, um, mm-hmm. than, um, we often realize, uh, yeah. and, uh, two, I, well, just, I want you to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just know that there are a lot of, um, there's a lot of people struggling with this that I know of um, a lot of young clients, um, a lot of moms and dads that Mm -hmm. have kids going through this now, and they were struggling with it um, in their teens. I didn't really struggle with this myself. So I am curious about it. Um, And so your story is, is huge. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, as much as you want and you're comfortable with. Oh, I'm comfortable. Just, you know, sometimes I feel like I'm blabbering on. No, so you're, you're not. You're just, no, you're, you're not. A, we're on YouTube. So just put a hand up and be like, yeah. hey, <laughs> hey, lady. <laughs> Keep going. Keep going. Oh, yeah. Just, I mean, my heart goes out to all the parents and all the kids, really, because it's a really complex issue. And I'm certainly no authority. All I have is my own story and my own experience. But having experienced that, one thing I will say is that I I'll get back into the nitty gritty. But one thing I do want to say is that sometimes I think people say out there like, oh, you'd never recover from an eating disorder. It's just something you learn to live with and manage. I don't believe that. I feel like I've recovered. I've fully recovered at this point. Um, Is my relationship with food something that I want to continue to evolve? Sure. But is my relationship to everything something I want to continue to evolve? Sure. I mean, I want to continue to evolve my relationship to my husband. Anything that I love, I want to continue to evolve. I want to continue to evolve my relationship myself. So I don't believe that anyone that's struggling with an eating disorder is doomed to have an eating disorder or live with that for the rest of their lives. And I want to say that really up front and super loud and clear is like, I do believe that you can 
hundred percent recover from an eating disorder and that you can have a beautiful, wonderful relationship with food. Mm -hmm. Today, I do, I have a beautiful, complicated, wonderful relationship with food. And it's something that is going to continue to evolve. Um, okay, so yeah, it took me a long time. And really what got me over the hump was I, my love of circus, which I talked a little bit about in the last podcast. Um, it became, you know, in a way, looking back on it, it was almost like a different way to control my body. Mm -hmm. So I, whereas an eating disorder was a certain way to control my body, circus and the intensity of it and the physicality of it was a different way. It was a certainly a healthier way. You know, it's like um, sometimes in when alcoholics are recovering, like I don't think that this is recommended so much anymore, but I know that they used to recommend carrying around candy and having sugar all the time because alcohol turns into sugar in the body. So, you know, part of the craving is the body physically craving that sugar. So just as a, you know, an, an aid, just to always be, have access to sugar. So in a way it was a similar thing for me. It was like, okay, I wasn't ready to look at not controlling my body anymore, but I was able to sort of shift it into something that was in a way healthier, which was circus and the intense physicality that is associated with that. Right. So being strong and being flexible became way more important than starving myself. But that does not mean that I did not still have disordered eating. It just means that I wasn't at a critical level where it was, you know, essentially ruining my life. Like I did, you know, I finished college at 25 and like all of these things that happened because I just couldn't get out of the real, um, the real trenches with disordered eating that was really compromising my physical health um, and my mental health. So yeah, so circus came in and, and I still was dieting and this diet, that diet all the time, but it was in a much more acceptable, manageable place. And that's another, I'm going to take a little tangent here. That's another aspect of this is like, people look at, I think not everybody, some people look at eating disorders like, whoa, right. <laughs> but I don't think I've spoken to anyone on this planet, male or female that hasn't wanted to diet, that hasn't you know, had some issue with their, the way they're eating and, and it, it ranges, right? Some people do have a really pretty fluid um, and settled relationship with their, what they're eating, but I don't know that anyone's there hundred percent just because the way our society is and the way our food is anyway. Um, that's for another time, but I'll stick to my personal story. So so yeah, so, you know, then when chronic illness came in and I ended up having this inflammatory bowel condition and lost my colon, which we talked about last time, I, I just zipped my lips about having an eating disorder because in my mind, it was my fault that I had lost my colon. That was my fault. I was to blame and having an eating disorder and destroying my body was part of it. And it was, it was a huge part of it. It was like, yeah, of course, of course you ended up losing your large intestine. Look at what you did to yourself. You ate candy corn and diet soda for three years. What else was going to happen? You know? So there was so much self blame and so much shame. And I, I wanted to live in this place where I was a victim of chronic illness. I wanted to be able to say, look at what happened to me, poor me. Like I, I needed that. I needed to feel for that time that this, any way that I could, that I, this wasn't my fault. Cause I was truly feeling like it was my fault. Um, and so through a lot of work, I finally now come to the place where it wasn't, I don't know who, what's fault. This, that's not a thing. It's not, you know, our bodies happen and that's how it is. It's, it's not my fault. It's not, not my fault. It's, you know, I'm responsible, but it's not my fault. So, um, so that made me realize that, wow, I really need to start sharing about having an eating disorder because that was a huge part of my history. It's a huge part of, um, why I'm passionate about helping people and, you know, um, how I am in the world, it's, it's a huge part of my life. And I, I, I know that social media and, you know, the, the best part of it and the part that I resonate the most with is, is having, watching people share authentically, connecting with people that are sharing authentically. And I know that to the largest extent I was sharing authentically, but I was leaving out this whole side. Um, so yeah, so that's what this time has really been about for me. And I didn't even realize it until I was already in it. You know, <laughs> the idea came for the course and I was like, all right, I got to do this course. And then through the creation of the course, I was like, 
oh, I have to talk about this now. That's what has to happen. I have to talk about this. That's what's going on, you know, which is how the universe sometimes works. It's like, oh, she, if we just tell her to talk about the eating disorder, she's like, no, no, that's silly. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make it a course, you know? So, um, so yeah, so that's where I'm at. I'm just, you know, um, and, and the whole, again, the whole reason for this course was because of something that I've recently gone through. I've recently just taken my relationship with food to another level. And I've really been exploring that the past couple of months and just like learned so much about things that I was still holding on to, you know, because when I had an eating disorder, food was fear. It was a terrifying thing. Everything I ate was going to make me fat, which was going to make me unlovable. And then when I got sick, everything I ate could leave could lead to me in the hospital and possibly dying. So it just, there was so much fear wrapped up around food, which I think whether you have a diagnosed eating disorder or whether you have a diagnosed inflammatory bowel condition, I think a lot of people can resonate with that fear. Is this good for me? Am I being good? Am I being bad? Is this healthy? Is this not healthy? It's just, especially, it's just, there's so much, there's so much chaos around what we ingest as humans these days. <sighs> I, um, there's so much for me to take in, <laughs> digest. Yeah. Right. With what you just said. Thank you, Cody. I, um, yeah, I, you said it so well, there's right. There's, there's so much there. I think one, the one thing, well, there's so many things that resonated. <laughs> um, I, I agree with you um, on all of it. I also agree that every single human, I don't, maybe I shouldn't say every single, maybe there's a small percentage of people that have not thought about food uh -huh. in, um, in a way that um, didn't like impact them of like, oh, I shouldn't eat that or I shouldn't do this. So um, there's that, that line, right? Uh, so I really do think that no matter what, how we look at food and how we think about it, um, always needs to shift. So I think that this is very good. I even talk about that with daycares when they're talking to the children, uh, just put the food out, just mm -hmm. it, let, let's just, let, cause when you, when you said that at the beginning with your great love of food, right. Um, it's, you see that with them, it, even at that little young age, they haven't, they're just like, oh, it's good. Mm -hmm. no, 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 no. <laughs> and we suddenly are like the carrot's good. And that little muffin is bad. So eat the carrot first and uh, just, no, just, just let them <laughs> be. <laughs> so we, we, we do that out of love. I always say that it's, it's not out of, I don't believe it's out. It's not out of ill intent. Mm -hmm. It's out of always out of some purpose, but if we could begin to let what you're doing, right. To change that, which is so hard for us. And um, and I, I think there's so many things that we have to change for ourselves. Um, and it's just how we look at things, how we look at every single thing that flashes up, every single thing that then we can, oh, I need to be, why am I not as pretty or as thin or whatever, right? Um, so oh, there's so many things that are just going through my head all at one time. <laughs> I'm with you. I know. I, there was a thing that you had said, which you haven't mentioned now, but it stuck with me where somebody had said that if they lifted you in circus, that mm -hmm. uh, if, if you were a little bit lighter, that then you could, um, you know, that it would be easier for you, them to lift you. And so you then decided to just eat lettuce. Mm hmm. And then, um, and you did, you just ate lettuce. And so mm -hmm. then, and then you got lighter and you felt great because then you could perform better. Right. And um, these sort of things for me, and, and I say this because I never, I never went through that. Now, I obviously, um, I've obviously looked at myself at times uh, growing up and was like, oh, I should, you know, like you're saying, I should get a little thinner or whatever right we've all had those moments but um I wouldn't I had never thought of just eating lettuce um and so my mind would have been different right so it's fascinating to me um to watch your control like that mm -hmm. um so I think that is 
and I and I've talked to other I'm rambling now myself because you're I, not you're not it's great because <laughs> I've talked to other people now um and and like the the girls who've gone through it and they're now like 24 25 trying to break it mm -hmm. um and it's the same, same similar start I hear them where they thought oh they they it's same where they would have tried lettuce or something and then they saw a great result a great I say that with quotes um and then now 10 years later it's like they can still what they say is they can they could see themselves sliding back quickly if something was triggered in their life is that sort of the same thing that would have happened to you yeah <clears throat> certainly not now because no yeah yeah I don't I just don't it's like the cord has been cut yeah but absolutely because it's so you know and I got into all sorts of things from that. I started cutting myself, but there was a lot of different um, self-hatred behaviors that came in. Um, and yeah, it's when something's effective, we're human beings. We do what we're trained, our brains work. If it's effective, do that. Like, it's not that easy to break that connection because it's effective. And it's, I think one of the reasons both of us feel like we're rambling and the public will tell us if we're not, mm -hmm. if we are or not, is because there's so much connected, right? Like the way we nourish ourselves is connected to so many other things in our life. It's connected to how we show up in our relationships. If it's connected to how we, it's deeply connected to how much we love ourselves or feel about ourselves. Yeah. It's connected to a certain level of guilt for even feeling this way when there are people in the world that are starving. You know, there's so much, it's just, as I've been working on this more consciously lately, I just see this web of like, I'm noticing in my own life, all these other things start to unwind. The more I unwind my, my ability to be in love with food, which is, you know, and not in love, like romantic love, but literally in the vibration of love with food, with my body, with my ability to digest. It's, it's, it does make your brain kind of go quickly like what's happening to you and I right now, because it's so deeply connected to everything. And yeah, I mean, that, I think the part that you're um, hitting on is the addiction part. And I think that's another aspect is that in our society, certain addictions are considered more acceptable than others. Yes. And being a drug addict, I'm not, please don't anybody listening. I have, you know, I'm not saying this is not a negative comment in any way. I'm just making the parallel that being a drug addict is, is more societally acceptable in a way than having an eating disorder. Having an eating disorder is still a little more taboo. It's a little more shadowy. I mean, I think that's starting to change with social media. Probably teenagers will know the answer to this question better than I. <laughs> but at least when I grew up, it was like more cool to have a problem with drugs and alcohol than it was to have a problem with food. Right. So um, I think there is this shadowy aspect of it but it's a real addiction. It's a, it's a, it's a big A addiction, you know, and that aspect of it in the brain, what happens in the brain, I'm not a neuroscientist, so I can't explain that, but that's, I think the part you're talking about is just like, even 10 years later, that can get kicked on so easily. And, yes. you know, it's just, yeah, it's that's, a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. And, and these are the, these are, are the conversations where I, um, why I think it's so important, why, as everyone knows, I can well up in a minute. Mm. Um, and when I'd started the podcast, why I wanted it to be all metaphysics, right? But I think the reason why this is so important is because if we can't understand, you know, I, when I work with people and they say, I want to understand intuition, and I say, unless mm. we understand why we're stopping ourselves, right? in these certain ways we can't um fully right <laughs> and it's true and it's the same for me where i've been so so big on understanding where am i where are the gaps for myself and then being like okay this is where i need to get uncomfortable so it's the same for you right and so having these podcasts on where I'm like, okay, well, I want to hear it, understand it, because this is really big for people um, so that we can be fully aligned uh, yes. as humans, because there's no way we can totally get into, I mean, we're all on the spiritual journey, but truly getting in, because what you're saying right now is like, it, unless you can really honor that, that space for yourself, 
don't yeah. Know. Oh my God. I mean, I'm just like, it's so excited by what you're saying, because I think sometimes in spirituality communities, some people have it backwards mm -hmm. or think it's backwards. It's like, oh, I want to transcend. I need to go out there. I need to, I want to be more in touch with my intuition. It's all out there. It's outside of me. It's, it's being higher. It's being positive. It's da, da, da. It, for me. And this is my personal opinion. And I respect everybody's opinion on this. And we're all different humans and we all have different ways. <laughs> But for me, it's in here. It's in this yes. body. I can't, the way I get connected, you know, being, we're here to be human. That's what we yes. are. We're humans. Yes. And being human is a magical, divine thing. So to cut, to say, how do I be less human? I want to be less human. Like, oh, this is not interesting. This body is just a body. No, the body is magical. The yes. body has all the answers. It's in there. It's not out there. It's, it's inside. So yes. Which is why it gets to me to, it does get messy. It uh -huh. gets awful, but like, if we keep looking out there and yes, you need to bring people in to support you while you're yes, learning, yes, right? Yes, yes. Um, but you're learning to understand more of this suit that you're wearing. Like, okay, well, what does this mean for me? And eh, all this, every time I make those noises, everyone who's listening, I apologize. You can't see my face. So you have to watch <laughs> it on YouTube. Um, but it's like, is it's understanding more of your process. And that's what I think is so important um, because if you just keep looking out there, you're not getting it. Uh, so I think this is so, so huge. Um, so what does, <laughs> we're now finally getting to, what does this diet matrix, breaking the <laughs> diet matrix actually look like? Yeah, okay. Well, I just wanna touch on one thing you said okay, because yeah, it's okay. really important, Yes. which is the deeper your connection the more love you have with the, your body, the deeper your connection with source, the deeper your connection with the universe, yes. the deeper your connection with your intuition. So they, they ha you have to work both, right? They have to be connected. So that, which leads me to what this course looks like. So it's, it's three weeks and it's once a week on Zoom. There's a Facebook community, private Facebook community for connecting with each other and support, which will be really important because I think community now more than ever is super important, which is why I'm such a, I mean, there's a million reasons I'm such a fan of you, but that's one of them. Um, um, and so each week has a very specific focus and I'll just briefly touch on each week. The first week is about love. Well, it's about reconnecting with your love of food um, and learning what you truly love. What do you really love to eat? And that's, you know, I could tell you, I could ask you that question and you might know, or you might not know. Some people really have no idea. They have no, they think they know what they're supposed to eat. They know what they're supposed to like to eat. They know what they're, but they know what their naughty pleasures are theoretically, but they don't truly know what makes them salivate. What makes your body get all tingly? What makes you feel like excited to get to the food? Um, and this is a process, again, everything that I'm teaching, I went through and was really surprised. So I have some exercises and some, you know, play work to do in between. Um, we're gonna watch a really amazing YouTube clip, clip about this, very short. And um, each week is also infused with gut health because we can't truly be, I believe that we can't truly be in a healthy relationship with food if we are in a compromised situation with our guts. Um, and that doesn't look, that's a spectrum. Some people that come to this course might have severe gut issues and I have severe gut issues. So my gut health is not, what you know is not amazing and ideal all the time but it's workable and so as you know every week is also going to be infused with gut health and one what we're going to talk about in week one is how overgrowth of fungus overgrowth of certain bacteria overgrowth of candida overgrowth of parasites can influence what we desire what we crave mm -hmm. because those organisms inside of us have one goal, which is to stay alive. And they can only stay alive on certain nutrients, mostly sugar. So they will drive us to think, think we love these sweet things that maybe we don't really love. We don't really know. So that every week is infused with different aspects of gut health. So that's week one. Week two is um, all about the nervous system. So it's about how we feel when we're eating. And this was born out of me realizing, and anyone that's listening to this, you can't see me, but I'm lifting my shoulders and I'm like scrunched up in a little ball. I was eating like this. I was like, <gasps> right? I was eating in such, my body was in so much tension. My jaw was clenched. I was terrified. <laughs> Even if I wasn't consciously terrified, I was terrified. And 
digestion doesn't work when you're eating like that. You need to be relaxed and rest and digest. They call the parasympathetic state rest and digest for a reason. So it's all about our, how is our body? How are we eating? What's our emotions around food? What are we doing when we're eating? All that stuff. Um, and we're going to talk about the vagus nerve when we do that, which I know you're a fan of too. Um, I'm taking a class right now about the vagus nerve, so I'm super okay. excited about it. Um, and then week three is uh, really an open. I'm leaving that open because um, the goal of week three is to give people a way to keep moving forward when the class is over. But what we're going to get into is going to be dependent on what comes up for the participants during those two weeks. Because I really think that as we've discussed throughout this whole time together, this issue is so individualized and I trust in the group that's coming together is coming together for a reason that they have something to offer each other. So I really wanna see what comes up for the people involved and then we will tailor week three around that. Um, yeah, and there'll be lots of tips along the way, lots of PDFs and all sorts of you know stuff like that. That's so good. <laughs> and so they can find you on, um, I mean, we're not, this isn't the end, but they can find, they can sign up on your Instagram or is there a link on there and then they can go yeah. through. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. There's a link on, I have two Instagram accounts right now. One, my personal account is at Cody, M-A-H-E-R, the number 18. And my uh, business account is at agency underscore wellness. And it is in linked both, uh, in both places. Um, yeah, and it's it's a very affordable course. It's really made for ease um, of entry. So, you know, and it's open to everyone. I know sometimes people associate this with women, but there are plenty of men out there that have this issue as well and that want, you know, that are dieting like maniacs. And we're not going to use that word anymore after this course. We're just going to, we're going to toss it out, that word diet. <laughs> it's too loaded. No, thank you. <laughs> it's interesting because die is the first three word letters, mm -hmm. right? Like mm -hmm. why... <laughs> Die, yeah. I just say way of eating. That's what I say. My way of eating. Yeah. And again, like one thing I really want to stress about this course is sometimes I think my brain does this too, even. It's like you hear breaking the diet matrix and you think some lady's gonna get on a screen and be like, go eat all the MMs, you're free. You know, yeah. like that. And that's not what this is about at all. Yeah. I'm all about health. I'm all about whole foods, but I'm all about loving eating that way. Like I yeah. love, I love a bowl of broccoli rub, like nothing I love more than that. So it's really not, it's not about like going crazy and eating a bunch of crap. It's just about learning to love yourself and nourish yourself. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think that's, um, you know, as we start to uh, really embrace loving yourself completely you actually want to nourish yourself in all the ways right that are we were talking about this before the podcast actually started is and i've i've noticed this from myself as well is um when like we all have different habits i can run myself really into the ground and that's not actually nourishing myself either right mm -hmm. and so it's changing habits um so when you're starting to really accept yourself into self-love mm -hmm. you're wanting to do things in in care so um I know for myself, it's going, it's like, I'm staring at a large bowl of grapes right there. So it's like, you're wanting to put good quality things in for yourself. And right now it's like, I, I want quality rest so that I will be the best for myself and for my children and for my friends and family, all of those things. Right. So, um, it's creating that balance, I think. So that's, I think what you're saying is, um, always knowing you can have the the balance of food there's yeah. gonna, maybe, might be right like that's kind yes. of where I am um but I think it starts to shift in every area um of your life right and so that starts to happen where maybe at some points you're constantly drinking or whatever and suddenly you're like why would I be doing that to this as we're saying everything that's in here is what is good uh -huh. you don't want to put that stuff there anymore that's that's your vessel like yep. and not in a rigid way right like that's no. the real that's the real distinction I think sometimes also um one thing I want to say is that this is, I'm like a very silly fun person <laughs> at my nature I can yeah. fight my nature and get very um rigid and perfectionistic sure but um who I truly am is like silly and fun. And um, 
that's what I want for this. Like, this is going to be fun. This is not about rigidity. We are here to enjoy this beautiful planet and each other. Like that's, that's why we're here. Sure. We're here to learn things and we're here to grow and we're here to do all these things. But part of that is to really enjoy and food is amazing. Food is delicious. Like (laughs) it's so cool that we need to eat in order to live. And look, I get it. This is complicated. There are a lot of people out there that don't have access. There are a lot of people out there that for medical reasons can't enjoy food right now. So I understand that this is a very nuanced topic that we're talking about, but you know, we are here to enjoy life. And if you are in a state of life where you're able to eat and enjoy food, then that is a blessing. And you're not doing anyone that doesn't have access to food or that can't eat. You're not doing them a service by not being in full love and acceptance of your ability to eat and enjoy food. Brilliant. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I agree. Okay, good. <laughs> I think that's uh, I think that's the the truest part. And yes, you are so much fun, and people can do that. <laughs> and um, and all the things that you you posted, you did you did one the other day, which is so you and I are very similar. Um, uh, but one of them was when like when was the last time you actually felt your own body? I think uh-huh. really a really great. Uh, statement and so true right like how often do we actually sit with ourselves and and appreciate our own bodies and um it's so we can get so busy and Mm -hmm. we forget to nourish in all ways ourselves um so you're really bringing those questions back um about how important our own selves are yeah Yeah. And in this, you know, it's, well, I love that word. I said this on the live. I love that word in touch. And it only occurred to me when I, like when you're in touch with somebody, like you're, 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 maybe you're not physically touching them or maybe you're not physically touching yourself, but that word touch has a meaning. Right. And it's like, you know, that video that I made was super authentic. I was just like in the back, I was like, wow, my leg is really soft. When was the last time I actually felt my leg while I was touching my leg? You know, like there's, there's a, um, like you're saying, we're all just surviving and, and speeding through in certain times. And sometimes that's just how it is, but you know, there are, there, we do have the ability to just come back to like, wow, I have a leg. And so there is going to be a lot of touching of oneself. Um, again, non-sexually in this case, but um, it's important. It's, uh, that's been a game changer for me, spending some time every single morning, just massaging my body and, and or just like, you know, all, just waking up my meridians and, and, and lymphatic flow. There's a lot of physical benefits that come with this stuff as well, but it's really shifted a lot of things for me. So I agree with you so much. It's just like, getting back in touch is kind of like an, a wonderful theme, hopefully for 2022 in many, many ways. And we have to include ourselves in that because yeah. even the, the pandemic, we, we all are, a lot of us are talking about how it disconnected us in a lot of ways from other people. But I think in a certain way, it disconnected us from ourselves too, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and so we have to remember ourselves in that, in that equation. A hundred percent. And I, think you know I think I've, I often will say to people like when like you say with your leg and I'll say it's simple like how often are you just like looking at the bumps of your own hand mm-hmm. and to feel it and to like to, to take it takes four minutes um mm-hmm. and to just actually go through like the uh, each one of your fingers and this is not sexual because I think sometimes people think you're wanting it to be it, it can be why not that's fine sex is great that's great um <laughs> We but, like sex. <laughs> it's good. Um, but to actually just take time and you're really then getting to know your own hands and you're getting to know your own because we sometimes just go like, oh yeah, okay. Like it's like it's almost like we're ashamed to spend time doing that with ourselves. Mm-hmm. And um, but I think you know, you're you're not gonna ever feel your hand at you know 8 a.m. like at that time ever again. So just do it. Like yeah. why not? Yeah, hundred percent. And I think this, you know, like this is just this year of reconnection with ourselves, hopefully with other people, like, and with our, yeah, like, and also how much, how often do you spend touching your body or touching your hand or noticing your hand without judging it? Like I just did it. When you were saying that, I looked down at my hand and I was like, oh, my hands are really dry. You know, that's the first thing 
that occurs when we like, or you look in the mirror and someone might go, you look in the mirror and I go, oh my God. And then I walk outside and my husband's like, you look beautiful today. I was like, oh, I was just scrutinizing every single part of my face, but thank you. You know, like this is how often are you in this non-judgmental, just like, wow, this is what my hair feels like place, you know? And, and there's a reason for these that we talk, you and I are talking about these things that isn't so tangible, like what these things do for us on a physiological, emotional, and spiritual level isn't necessarily something that we can put our finger on, but you know, it helps, it helps us be more human. And I think the goal is to be more human and not less human, you know? (laughs) And I, I think the, one of the great things that we said just before this aired, um, was you were, we were, well, we were just talking and you had said, I don't know. Yeah. Uh. And I had laughed because I'd said, oh, I just put that out in, in my group yesterday to say, to say, I don't know today. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, um, and for a lot of people don't always understand what that means, but it's actually a very freeing um, co- uh, sentence to say, I just don't know. So do you want to say a little bit about that? And then we can like, what that means to you? Yeah. And- yeah, sure. I mean, it means so much to me. I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to loop it back to the, to this topic, which for yeah. me in, in the topic of food, like when I gave myself the assignment or actually it was given to me by a, a dear friend and acupuncturist who was like, just go eat things you love. And I was like, what? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, no. And I had to start with like, okay, what do I love? Do I love, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what food I love. I've spent way too many years trying to figure out what food is safe to eat, what food is going to be healthy, what food is not going to cause a reaction. What do I love? I have no clue. I know what I loved as a five-year-old, but like I've, like, it's been just a jumbled mess since then. So I had to start with, I don't know. And I always think just starting with, I don't know, is just such a beautiful place and not from a constricted place of like, oh God, I don't know. You know, there's a really big difference between saying, oh God, I don't know. And saying like, I don't know, but I'm willing to know. Mm -hmm. And then just, you know, seeing. And for me, like with this little example of food, I tried some things. I tried some things that were scary to me. I had a bite of like a cheese spinach pie and I haven't eaten dairy in 15 years. And I was like, "Mm, this is delicious for one or two bites. And then "Mm, it's a little much for me. Okay, cool. I loved that for a bite. Then I had like a croissant and I was like, wow, this is amazing. This tastes like, again, like being a kid. And it was like another three bites. I was like, okay, that was enough. So it's just about discovering. And I feel like if we can sort of come out of our shells a little and, and not feel like we need to know all the answers and just experiment with an open heart and with a gentle touch, it's like, then we can start to know. And like you say, you and I know you, when you know, you really know. And that knowing is doesn't come from your mind. It comes from somewhere else. So that was a long-winded answer to your question. No. I, I love, I don't know. <laughs> that, I think is, that's perfect. Um, because I think it's, it's living in the vulnerability of, I don't know. Um, because I, th- and I think that you explained it really well, um, using food as a, as a great example. And to, I keep looking up this word that just said, embrace change, trust in yourself, mm. um, which actually is, is perfect for it. Um, because we want to stay in the know, um, in staying in the knowing, because mm. that feels safer. Um, but it's actually to walk into, I actually don't know. <laughs> I have no idea what's going to happen and I'll be curious. Um, and then yes, there's certain things I, I know, mm-hmm. <laughs> but I'm going to walk into the, I don't know and be okay. Yeah. And you know, look, if as a comfort is if you're still alive, you have an a hundred percent track record of being okay. Like you're a yes. hundred out of a hundred times you're, you're still okay. Yes. And, and I think sometimes looking at the past can be really helpful because you can look back at a really challenging situation in your life. And maybe the outcome wasn't perfect. Like I can look back at, you know, lying in a hospital bed and thinking I was going to die. And was the outcome perfect? Was it an easy road? No. But do I love my life and am I okay? Yeah. And there was a lot of, I don't know, between then and now. So we just, you know, we want to know, and we're always going to want to know, and that's just how we're wired. But (laughs) 
when we it can be a real um, soothing thought when you really feel into like it's okay, it's okay, sweetheart. You don't have to know. You, you know? just don't have to know. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. So, uh, this was so good. Um, yeah. So, what would you? What little piece would you give for people um, who are? maybe not as clear as you right now, one little piece of not, maybe, you know what I'm saying, not advice, just. Yeah, support. clear, clear in, in a certain area or just in general feeling unclear. Um, you can decide. Okay, I'm going to take a minute with that one. Just, okay. I'm going to ask, actually just invite everyone to take a breath with me because I'm going to do it. So why don't we all do it? <laughs> that's my advice <laughs> i love it <laughs> just take a breath <laughs> which that's i know sounds best. super trite <laughs> and <laughs> a really great laugh yeah. <laughs> and that's how the universe often works for me my yeah. friend <laughs> so good <laughs> And a good good laugh okay yeah. and what's in your cup oh yummy um <laughs> it's called dandy blend have you ever had it no but you're like the second or third person who's talked about it. okay so what's what's in okay dandy so blend? it's just it's organic dandelion root which i'm it's okay so i love the taste of coffee love 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 my body and coffee like if i had some coffee into this podcast with you everyone would be like skip um <laughs> Cause I, you wouldn't even understand. I'd be like, blah, 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 blah. um, anyway, so it, it has that bitterness of coffee, um, and that sort of richness, but it's just organic dandy dandelion root, uh, gluten free and all these things. And I put like, I put all sorts of things in there. I like to make my morning drink like a total, total elixir fest. So I've got some, um, bee pollen and some moringa and some, um, Irish sea moss and some nut milk and it's just yummy that is amazing <laughs> i love 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 my drink can you tell i love it <laughs> yeah well done oh uh, well thank you cody always yeah. it is uh, i guarantee people are going to love this as much as i love talking to you always and I cannot wait to see where you go I love you Cindy I love you dearly thank you so much thank, thank you everybody for being here and listening and um just uh, if you're in you're in a hopeless space just uh zoom out it's gonna be all right oh, oh I like that yeah thank you okay Mwah. bye bye